The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. All right, we need a speaker for this project. No, I mean a big speaker, not a small one. Like, no, bigger than that. Still, that's just a size up. No, that's that's more medium. Could you just, just a big speaker? Just come on, not a medium speaker. That's, that's way too small still. The size has to increase. Then I make you a giant one. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we're making filmmaking equipment. You see, this is not just a workshop, it is also a studio where I make these videos. See that giant light behind me? That is necessary to give you this picture. But we also need other things to improve videos. So today we're building a ceiling mounted device that helps me tackle three problems for filmmaking. The first problem we are going to tackle is sound. I need to have an echo-free room to be able to record clear audio for you with this lav mic. So it is essential that we get rid of all the echoes. I'm in a concrete underground bunker as you see and that is perfect to generate some echoes. So I need a lot of soft stuff in all the corners, some diffusers to improve that. The panels that we are building today will tackle that for the mid frequencies because that's uh, something I wasn't satisfied with and I took a sound engineering course at a film school to get some knowledge on how to improve that. The second problem is lights. I can't place these bulky lights in every shot and sometimes I need them to be up on the ceiling so I can't mount a thing like that up on the ceiling to have soft light but I can bounce back light from the ceiling. So our panels that we built today will have lights, really powerful LED lights that are bounced off the ceiling to give me a soft light from above. My third problem is that I like to hear podcasts and music when I'm working in my shop, but I can only hear them clearly when I pump them up to max volume because my tiny speakers are over at my computer desk and I need to work over in that area. So max volume it is but our panels will act as ceiling mounted speakers with a huge membrane, that's the size of the sheet you saw in the beginning, and they will make clear sound everywhere in my shop at lower volumes. Let's start by cutting the extruded polystyrene. I made sure that all of the roundings are equal, so I made a jig on my laser cutter and used that as a template to cut them. Then I have painted them multiple times to make sure they are white. I was only able to get pink XPS, that's usually manufacturer specific. So every manufacturer uses different colors for different types of extruded polystyrene. Mine happened to be pink. Volume, loudness and sound pressure are independent measurements. The only thing that you can really measure is sound pressure, but that is not an indication of the loudness that you perceive. That's a subjective value. The big membranes are optimized for the frequency range of human hearing in the human voice range. These are the mid frequencies, the low mids and the high mids. To drive the membranes, we use Visatone exciters. These are basically loudspeakers without the membrane. You attach them to the membrane that you built and they will shake it and act as a completed speaker. Speakers are always consistent of a magnet, a coil and a membrane and these exciters are basically just a coil and the magnet without the membrane. So we attach them to our own membrane and use that to shake a bigger surface. For the lights I wanted to use LED strips. It is crucial that they have the right color. I need them to be daylight like this light panel so they have the same color than all my other lights. That makes it much easier to set them up. And I need them to run on a voltage that I can deliver through a thinner cable that I can run along my ceiling. So I chose 24 volt light strips. You can find them linked down below. These have a beautiful color that is very near daylight. I need these lights to be dimmable. So there are two ways to achieve that, PWM 
and voltage driven. PWM is the usual way to do this. It's basically just turning on and off the LEDs in a very rapid fashion to perceive a different level of brightness depending on how big the duty cycle is. But this comes with a price. If you want to film lights, you have to match these flickers to the shutter speed of your camera. So if we would film the lights up above that are driven by mains voltage at the wrong frequency, 50 Hertz uh, is the frequency in Europe where I am, 60 Hertz is in America. And if I would not match that, you would see the flicker on camera. So voltage driven dimming is the way to go for filmmaking. If you alter the voltage, the brightness will change, but there is no frequency to be seen. The lights are always on. This is less energy efficient, but for filmmaking, it's the better way to do it. To control the dimming, I want to be able to stand on the ground and just reach up to the panels and alter the dimming without having to look. So I'm using the slider potentiometers that you know from a past episode linked below, where we built a synthesizer with Arduino. These are the same slider potties, linked below if you want to get them. And by using slider potties, I can just move my fingers around and I will instantly know at which setting I am without having to look. Hey, how would you like to get free stuff like this? The Element 14 Road Test Program sends you free products in exchange for detailed reviews posted to the community. Head over to element14.com to see past reviews and apply to be a road tester today. Cable management is a very crucial task for a setup like this because cables add up and add up and before you know it there is a big honking chunk of cables running around your ceiling and I'm not sure if that will hold up forever. So I need to have light cables and I need them to be as few as possible. So what I want to do is daisy chain all these panels with a single cable that has multiple cores and transports the voltage for my lights and also the speaker signal. A common mistake that I made pretty often was to use cheap cables that I salvaged from some devices. But for this project, I needed a high quality cable that I can rely on and that has multiple cores. And I was pretty surprised that these LAP cables, which is a genuine German brand for high quality machine cables, I used them on my job before, they are uh, a lot cheaper than I expected. So I got a whole roll of them to make sure I have enough cable for this project. To connect all these panels and the cables, I used DIN 5-pin connectors. Yes, the same ones that I used in previous videos. I really love them. They are kind of still a standard for MIDI, for some audio video applications. My main goal with them is they need to be very robust. They need to carry all my signals that I want and they need to be easy to solder and to disassemble. And I found a certain type of DIN 5-pole with a metal casing and it also allows me to use thicker cables than with the standard plastic ones. For the first time on this channel, I will use my lathe that I restored pretty recently to do something productive. I will embiggen the holes on the connectors and make sure they don't interfere with anything else. Uh, I noticed that they are off-centric in the original, so in the end they will probably be concentric. And I'm also testing out the high frame rate capabilities of my camera. Let's assemble the dimming circuit. It uses the LM317T, a common voltage regulator that you may know from a lot of power supply projects. I use that to alter the voltage that is output to my LED strips. Here is the schematic. You can easily follow that and copy that, but there are sure better ways to do that. That's just my quick and dirty way. I built four of those for four panels and mounted them inside 3D printed boxes with laser cut flat uh, lids so I can get them faster than within my given time frame. So if I had more time, I would have made a custom PCB for that and ordered that, but the time didn't allow it. So let's get this thing done and I may redo that in the future with a custom PCB.
the power supply is a brick type 24 volts and I made a little 3D printed casing to mount my DIN5 connector into it and to also have the leads going to my amplifier. Let's connect everything up and give it a test drive. Here's a comparison. On the left side, you have the original footage without the new ceiling lights. On the right side, that's the same shot, but with the ceiling lights turned on. It doesn't look that much on camera for the casual viewer, but that makes a lot of difference because I can use different settings on my camera, have the focus set in a different way, that helps me a lot. And also to achieve the same effect, I would need to use lights like these pretty near the subject to get soft light. But with my ceiling studio panels, I can now achieve that with just a flick of a button. These studio panels can replace real soft boxes for shots like this, but they can improve my workflow with showing you components, parts and demonstrating all the projects, everything that I can do on my workbench and have the lights permanently set up for that application. That worked pretty good. And now it's time to test out the sound. It is very hard to show you how something sounds on camera. First, because I'm recording that with a microphone and you hear that back through your speakers, maybe tiny smartphone speakers or whatever, that will never sound the same. And the other thing is that sound pressure or the perception of sound that you hear is a pretty individual thing. So what I can tell you is these big membranes allow me to run them at a much quieter volume for the same sound perception. So I can understand a podcast or music in the same way, no matter if I'm over there or over there. Sounds. Today I want to build a wrist-mounted synthesizer. It should have a lot of buttons and switches and it should be programmable. So I can use all these buttons and switches to set a specific melody and then play that back. And while playing it back I also want to be able to alter the pitch, the speed <laughs> and the pattern. So I can use it like a DJ to annoy people better than ever before. The sound pressure of these devices is bigger than my tiny speakers on my computer. But there's also a drawback. If the recordings are not perfect, I can hear every crack, every little background noise. A very good podcast recording sounds great. Music that was professionally recorded sounds great. But your average YouTube video that's recorded with the onboard mic of the camera sounds absolutely terrible. I would still prefer to watch that over headphones. My ceiling mounted studio panels really improved my workflow. This video was already in parts recorded with them. They give me light, they give me speakers and they also improve the sound by reducing echoes in my room. Do you have ideas for audio projects? Is there something that would improve your workflow? Tell us on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.